word of warning before we begin. You've seen the thumbnail, it is a bit gross, but I hope you enjoy it nonetheless. Hello, welcome to Mr. C's Biology. Today we have another treat in store. We have some lungs. Now these lungs are from the same pig that uh, the heart came from. Um, I've just separated the two and don't they look great? I've neatened up a little bit. So we're gonna chop them up and see what's inside. Let's get cracking. You'll notice at first that this is a little bit wobbly. Uh, it's quite shiny as well. And, and this is the lung itself. Because it's so wobbly because it's full of air. So it is a bit like a sponge uh, and it's going to be able to fill up and inflate a lot more. Uh, whereas this, it's not, not very wobbly at all. Uh, in fact, it's not very squidgy at all. It's very, very tough. This is the trachea. Now this has got to be able to withstand all sorts of pressure. Uh, if you um, bend your neck in any direction, the trachea must stay open. So I can bend my neck and still be able to breathe. And so that is why this is really, really tough, but flexible. Whereas this needs to be able to expand every time I breathe in and relax every time I breathe out. If we cut it open, we'll see that the trachea goes down and turns into two bronchi and then into bronchioles and then finally into alveoli at the end. Then uh, there are some tougher bits inside it, but on the surface, it looks a little bit like a jelly. Let's just zoom a little bit further inside and see what's going on. So the trachea comes down and then we have a bronchus going into each lung. The bronchioles are smaller bronchi, and so they are splitting off as we move further down the bronchus. And then at the end of the bronchioles, you get the alveoli. These are little air sacs, and that is where the gas exchange happens, where oxygen is leaving the lung and going into the blood, and carbon dioxide is leaving the blood and going into the lungs. Now, interestingly, if someone is asthmatic, it's their bronchioles that are the things that tighten up, that constrict, and as they constrict, that makes the wheezing sounds that asthma, asthmatics often have when they are having an attack. When you breathe in your inhaler to relieve that attack, then it goes down the trachea through the bronchus and then has the effect on the bronchioles, um, enables you to then get air to your alveoli so that you can then start breathing and not feeling breathless anymore. Okay, back to the gory stuff. What I've done now is I've opened up the area and I've chopped up a lot of the other stuff that we don't need to look at at the moment. And, and we can see this really obvious upside down Y shape when we look at the trachea. So as it goes down, it splits into two uh, main bronchuses. One goes to the left lung, one goes to the right lung. Inside the lung that I've just chopped open is bright red and that's because it's got lots and lots of blood there. It's gonna pick up the oxygen and lots and lots of oxygen that's going to make the blood bright red as opposed to a kind of duller red. Um, and as they go down, you hopefully can see that there are lots of different tubes that might go down. Lots of blood vessels there as well. They are the softer tubes. So this one here, um, this tube more easily collapses here. So that is a blood vessel. Mm -hmm. um, and some other tubes like this one here that are a bit tougher that aren't as easy to collapse and so they are going to be um, tubes that carry air, the little bronchioles that are going to go to the alveoli. So what I've done is I've just cut off a little bit of trachea and can you see how tough it is? It's got these rings of cartilage uh, that mean that it springs back to shape really, really easily. Uh, but because they're little rings and they've got soft bits in between, it's also really flexible. So it's really, really tough, but really, really flexible. Okay, last thing, and then I'm gonna put this away. Um, so we can see that as I've been cutting it up, there have been some little air bubbles released. Again, that's another sign that these are the air tubes that we're chopping open. If there aren't air bubbles, then it might be uh, a blood vessel. But it's just about the difference in texture that these two things work really, really well together. Something really soft, really squidgy, um, that's going to be filled with loads and loads of air and something that's going to carry the air, something a lot tougher uh, but still very, very flexible. And that's part of the wonder of the body and how all these things work together. So one final thing before we go and that is how do we actually get air in and out of our lungs? How does ventilation work? Well, there are several different parts to it. The main bit that we'll obviously see is our ribs. When we breathe in, they move up and out. And when we breathe out, the ribs move down and in. And you can feel that just as you're breathing right now. 
The other thing is the diaphragm. So the diaphragm is what actually drives most of the air flowing in. And so it contracts and moves down and kind of flattens as you breathe in. Whereas when you breathe out, it relaxes and kind of forms a bowl shape, like an upside down bowl. Now what effects does that have on the volume of the lungs? Well, if we inhale, then the volume is going to increase. And when we exhale, the volume of the lungs is going to decrease. And the volume and the pressure are linked. And so if we think of a syringe, when we decrease the volume of a syringe, when we push down on the plunger, we increase the pressure inside it. And so then the, the liquid in the syringe leaves the syringe. And in the same way, if we decrease the volume of the lungs, then that's going to increase the pressure. And so the converse is also true. When we increase the lungs, we decrease the pressure relative to atmospheric pressure. And so air is gonna move down a pressure gradient. Both times it moves down a pressure gradient either from a high pressure inside the lungs to low pressure outside the lungs in exhalation, or from a higher pressure outside to a lower pressure inside during inhalation. And how does the air move? Well, obviously, air moves in when you inhale and out when you exhale. Time to clear up now, um, but hopefully see you next time. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. Just a quick plug at the end. If you want to buy me a coffee, you can do the link in the description. And uh, thanks so much to Wendy Mohammed who has supported me most recently. Really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. I'm just about to tidy up. Did you get your heart? Yeah. Did you get your heart?